It sounds simple, but it's taken a while to get to this realization. For an agency to be effective, it needs the right amount of people and resources. The most recent example is the success the IRS has been seeing. As reported by Federal News Network, the agency recently announced it had collected $1 billion in overdue tax revenue after launching a crackdown on millionaires not paying what they owe. Will it be enough evidence, though, to secure the IRS with the proper funding it needs going forward? For more on this, we're joined by Bob Tobias, former professor in the key executive leadership program at American University and a former federal union president. Mr. Tobias, thank you for taking the time. Nice to talk to you, Eric. Absolutely. Likewise. So why don't you just kind of give me an overview of what you see as, you know, the IRS announcing success. Looks like it's finally getting the technology and resources that the leadership there has always been wanting, um, but is more needed? And, and, you know, is this going to be kind of what we're going to see more from uh, the agency? So, Eric, the IRS recently announced that as a result of its increased funding of $60 billion over the next 10 years that it was able to hire more auditors and the results were really, really impressive. First, the audit rates on wealthy taxpayers with income over $10 million began moving from 11% coverage to in, in 2019 to 16.5% in 2016, and as you suggested, they already collected $1 billion from these folks who are making $10 million or more. I mean, you know, that's kind of pocket change for people in that in that income range. And Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen announced that the increased resources, coupled with more technology, is going to yield $851 billion over the next 10 years, which is a 14% return on investment of $60 billion. Now, I ask you, Eric, which private sector firm would turn down a 14% return on its on its investment? And I would say no one would. Now, and I can see that there are some people who always don't believe that $851 billion will be collected, and maybe that will turn out to be true. But I do know that will collect at least $60 billion from people who currently are not paying what they owe. And I suggest that's real progress. But what's even more interesting to me is that it recently sent um, 25,000 non-filing notices to taxpayers making more than a million and 25,000 to those non-filer notices to those who are making $400,000 or more. Now, a non-filer is someone who who just doesn't file their taxes as required every single year. And, and they're the kinds of individuals who are not on a salary, so they don't have money withheld. I mean, the people who have money automatically withheld have a 95% compliance. So these folks just thumb their nose at the at the entire system. And so before the infusion of the funds, before the better technology, they didn't have the people to send the resources or make the contact. But now they're going to be paying the money that they owe. And the research shows that once they start filing, they voluntarily comply in the future. So it's a, just another added benefit. So the audit rates the non-compliance is getting better, dramatically better. But it's not just increasing its um, audit success. The level of service answering telephone calls went from 11% in 2021 to 80% in 2024. And the only reason that happened, there were more people answering the phones. It It wasn't magic. It wasn't increased training, it was just more people answering the phones, so the, the level of service increased to 88%. But notwithstanding that success, I expect that there are going to be those in Congress who, in the, in the final throes of the fight over 2025 spending, are going to say, well, we need to cut the IRS, they're too big, they're non-responsive, or whatever they say. And this would be at a time, Eric, when the IRS... It's increasing tax compliance, increasing the level of service. 
and really serving the public well. So I'm hopeful. I'm really hopeful that the facts and the merits will lead a majority of the people in Congress to continue to fund the IRS at the level it needs to be successful. Not to mention the amount of personnel that it now has. It's also been able to, what seems, adopt a new set of technology that has made those workers' jobs easier. Uh, And that probably comes along with the increase in resources as well, right? It does. It's one thing, Eric, if I... If you haven't filed for seven or eight years, and I find out that you haven't filed for seven or eight years, and I have to get your paper returns, and I have to look through them to see how much you owe. I mean, that's the approach that the IRS has taken for many, many years. Now, it's uh, with its increased funding, it's using uh, artificial intelligence, and, and taxpayer returns are all um, online, and the artificial intelligence identifies those taxpayers who need to be audited. So it saves time, it saves energy, it saves from the IRS contacting people who are legitimately paying and helps them focus on those who are not paying. We're speaking with Bob Tobias, former professor in the key executive leadership program at American University. So how could this be utilized for making the case for other agencies? Obviously, the IRS is an important one, and it's the most politicized one. Um, Are there ways that this could maybe be formulated to argue for funding for uh, agencies that also face the same scrutiny similar to the IRS? I think the IRS case is one that is very easy to make because the goals are so easy to name and identify. In some agencies, it's much more difficult to define goals. In the IRS, they know how many tax returns are audited. They know how many telephone calls are answered. They know how much time is spent on each audit, so they know what how efficient the auditors are. So I think the IRS, unlike most other agencies, is in a particularly good place to argue for additional funding. Bob Tobias is the former professor with the Key Executive Leadership Program at American University and a former Federal Union president. Mr. Tobias, thank you as always. Thank you very much, Eric. It's a pleasure to be with you. Absolutely. The feeling is mutual. And you can find this interview along with more information at our website. Head to federalnewsnetwork.com slash Federal Drive. You can also subscribe to the Federal Drive wherever you get your podcasts.